let's review why we adopt the position we do these days to play guitar. And it's why it's a, becoming a standard position, not only for classical guitars, but from jazz guitarist Joe Pass to alternative guitarists and fingerstyle guitarists, plectrum style guitarists of all kinds, whether standing or sitting, have adopted a new ergonomic position. And it's based on the, just that, those principles of good ergonomics, to the, the least movement, the most efficient movement, and still play with facility and with ease, and without injuring ourselves. Those are our three goals. So first, let's look at sitting. You want to be sitting near the edge of the chair so that you have good support near the edge of the chair for the spine. Right, the strongest part, no matter what kind of chair, upholstered or not. If you sit near the edge, you'll have a good support for the spine to help keep it in line. Right? Then the next thing is to take the guitar and think about it in terms of where we have to move the arm. And we move the arm, flexing at the elbow, and we flex at the elbow to see where the hand is going to be. And that comes up right parallel to the body. We're going to put the guitar neck right in that position, here. And when we do that, we notice that the neck is at an angle. Contrary to, in the past, most guitars played like this. Well, here's the reason. We want to fit it, the guitar to us rather than accommodating the instrument. Make the guitar accommodate you. Accommodate the player. Okay, so... Now, looking at this angle, well, the reason it also works for us and helps is a really good basic geometry. So, if we look at the spacing of one finger per fret, just placing your fingers on the first string, first fret, second, third, and fourth, that's a normal span of the fingers. In fact, it's the furthest stretch you're going to have to make between adjacent fingers on adjacent frets, because as we go up, frets get closer together. So this is the biggest stretch we'll have in first position. Let's look at that. So if we have the guitar parallel to the ground, we have the maximum full stretch between my fingers and you can see how they're, um, they're splayed apart from each other. However, when I put the guitar in that position of where the hand wants to be, the fingers are actually closer together. That's because the distance is less. Did I squeeze the frets closer together? No. I, I shorten the distance because, let's drop a plumb line here, you see? There to there. I create a triangle shape. Fourth fret over to where the first fret would be. The actual reaching distance is reduced. Mm -hmm. See? Let's look at it that way. So the line of my thumb is the only reach, the maximum reach, that all four fingers will have in this angled 45 degree position. If I'm down at the 90 degree or horizontal position, now I've got this length, okay, or the length of even longer than my first finger. So I'm proving to you, you can easily see that in this position, I have the biggest stretch, the biggest reach here, a shorter one. Again, let's look at that triangular shape. Okay, there's the distance the fingers actually have to reach in this position. Now, the, the problem we get that, that that presents for us is that now the guitar is on this leg and it wants to slide off that way. We just simply put the right leg here as a bulwark against that sliding lower bow. This will keep it in place. We have this place to keep it in place, and then the chest. Problem is, I didn't get the right height, did I? So we want to raise the level of the guitar. That's why I was sort of on my tippy toes there trying to get the guitar up. It's just a habit because I know where I want it to be. All right, so now we have to get the guitar raised, but we don't want it to be on our toes. And there are several tools we can use, and I'm going to show you those right now. The first one is this device that uses suction cups. And there are different types of these. This one's called the Ergo Play, and it's fully adjustable by angle by height, and you can place it on the guitar with these suction cups, simply like this. I've already got it adjusted for me so that 
Here's my arm again, right? Let's see if it falls into place. Perfect. Now the guitar can rest on these three points inside of the right thigh. This is substituting for my leg, right? It's the joining between the guitar and my leg. Left leg, the right arm, and actually a fourth place, which is the chest. Now, just with those four contact points, the guitar is in, in place, it's stable, and I can move around as I need to. Okay, now I'll show you another one some people like that's a, a second version of this, and there are lots of these kinds of things with suction cups. Okay, a little bit smaller, and this particular one is small enough that it folds down, and you can actually put this into the guitar case with you. It folds down, fits right in there. The other one, of course, we have to remove before putting the guitar away into a case. This one's called the Gitano. It functions the same way the little strap part that when it's folding out rests on the left leg. Okay? There's a, another one, the traditional footstool that classical guitars have always used with adjustments to find the right height again. Let's see if, if it comes right for me. That's a little bit high. So I can go down a notch or two and find the right matching height to reach my hand. Okay, good. So let's test it again. Pretty good. The last thing that, that we can use is a guitar strap. And I won't demonstrate that in this video because most of you are familiar with the guitar strap. And I'll demonstrate that in another video. So there's how we set up to find the guitar angle and to make it stable, making the guitar fit to us, accommodating the person, not we, the person accommodating the instrument. I hope you enjoyed that.